Hi, I'm Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. I'm also the podcast host of Invest in Her and an award-winning producer, author, and TEDx speaker. Our show, Invest in Her, features phenomenal female founders and funders. As you know, women receive less than 2% of venture capital funding. Our series is about accelerating the funding of women by connecting them to funding resources. Let's meet today's guest. Welcome to this week's edition of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Katherine Gray. And as always, we have on an incredible guest. She is the CEO and founder of the Blazing Babes community and a venture capital investor. Let's welcome to the show, Renata Moreno. Hi, Renata. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks Good. for having me. Hey, thanks for flying in from Chicago to be on with us today. Really appreciate that. And uh, wow, you have... Uh, such an, you know, many of the women that come on uh, are doing so many things, and you are certainly one of them. Um, I want to kind of cover everything you, you do. So you're a serial entrepreneur. Yes. You have this Blazing Babes community, which I definitely want to talk about. Right. Uh, you're always raising money for like health and wellness and uh, investing in female founders. Yes. Like this is why I'm having you on. This is what I love about you. You invest in these female founded um, venture groups and, um, and and individual founders. So I, I love that. Let's talk all about how you got involved in investing in the venture capital world because I know you've been an operator serial entrepreneur for 25 years but so many women are successful and not in this space how did you get introduced to it and and take that leap sure sure so my journey's been interesting and let's just say a lot of I, one thing I want to say is there's no linear path to venture capital whether right. you're male or female or whatever we all come from different paths and we all have different skills to contribute so i want to start with that but i never really had the vision of i'm getting into venture capital when i was in my 20s it just i kind of was led to that through, okay through let me experience. stop you there and just say one thing every woman says exactly that and you know why because nobody ever told us about venture capital so there's not one woman that ever sits in that seat and says, oh, I knew all about this from day one. Right. Everyone stumbles into it and goes, OMG, right? <laughs> it's why we're making this movie called Show Her the Money right. to introduce more women yes. to venture capital. Yeah. And I love it when there's rock stars like you that are already in this space right. encouraging other women to yes. be in it too. Yeah, so I would say what my early days um, in my 20s was in investment banking. So I'm very fortunate to have moved into the space. Every space I've moved into has been male, the male dominated industries. Yeah. So I was three women at a team of 30 in my 20s at State Street Capital in Boston mm -hmm. doing off balance sheet financing, which is the debt side of the business. So really learning what a debit credit was, learning about the present value of money, really. And I come from a liberal arts background, so I knew nothing about finance. I mean, literally, I knew how to write. Wow, that was a real leap, <laughs> right? Into yeah. uh, the investment, investment banking. banking. Yeah. So I think, you know, back in the 90s, there weren't a lot of us um, in the banking finance world. So having that four year foundation in finance really has helped me. I think now in the venture Invaluable. space. Yeah, right? and, and then I was very fortunate to transition out of venture, I mean, excuse me, out of investment banking into tech in 99. I worked at Reebok in footwear tech for the CEO. Wow. It was in 1999. So I had my first exposure to tech when they didn't even call it that. I mean, it was really new. There weren't even mobile phones. So I am I look young, but I'm very <laughs> seasoned. You do look young <laughs> because when I said I read that you'd been an entrepreneur for 25 years, yeah. I'm like, 25? You're her. She doesn't even look like she's 25. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's the Latina blood, I guess. <laughs> um, but that really, that exposure, that one year working in tech really made me want to be in innovation. So I went back to business school. I went back to school, got my MBA at Booth, 
uh, full time and really only focused on new product development and innovation. Startups weren't a thing, and they were, but not really. And venture mm-hmm. was just very getting started, and that was in 2000. And usually it was the guys that were doing it at the time. Absolutely. And so I didn't really even know about it, but I loved innovation. So coming up, solving a problem with a product or an, a service, and but I did it in house in corporate. So I right. did concept ideation, a product launch. Think entrepreneurship inside corporate with big budgets. So instead of pitching to a VC, I'm pitching to an executive team saying, can you give me the money? So here's the data on why people aren't working out, why people are lazy, why people aren't working on their, how do we get people motivated in health to stay on the treadmill an extra 20 minutes? What kind of technology is out there for us to keep people working out, keep people motivated? And that's, I went through stage gate new product development, which is past this first stage, get the money, get the money, get to the next stage, get the money. And it was very, very structural in terms of new product development. So that was the foundation of now I'm in venture and the foundation of entrepreneurship, quite honestly, and how I can help women launch their businesses because they don't have that experience. Absolutely. What a unique experience that you had that, uh, you know, there are no coincidences, right? Like you were meant to be in venture. So you fell into that position because that was your path, right? And those that sounds like invaluable experience it was, to then entering into venture capital. And it was fun. And fun. Oh, I had a yeah amazing time. And I was one of the only women and there were, you know, men, I was actually brought in from a brought in to kind of blow up the company to instead of engineers building here we're going to build this it looks cool we're going to bring in product managers that really focus on the voice of the customer which is what do the customers want what do the consumers want and build from there by solving a problem right uh what a unique experience and then so then how did you end up in the venture capital what was okay the big and i'm going to be honest and very transparent because a lot of people are going to think the rationale behind it. Um, I became, I got married and became a new mom. So I was, at the time, I was traveling around the world doing this globally. Right. So interviewing customers, Hungary, J- Japan, China. Um, and I had PL responsibility, which is a big responsibility. Right. And at the time, unfortunately, the exi- I, I became a new mom and I didn't, you know, my mother had stayed home with my sisters and I for 10 years. She's a nurse and then went back to work. I was in this conundrum. Yeah. Do I stay home? Who's going to t- I'm interviewing nannies. Do I trust this nanny? I think women who become mothers ha- wrestle with this. Of course. And when the workplace isn't flexible to accommodate women who are who become mothers and they're, they're physically having the baby, you know, and 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 deciding, you know, should I stay home? Can I have flexibility? Can I have someone travel instead of me the first year of motherhood? I asked and pitched th- with a presentation and they said no. At the time Right, and so I said I decided to take to leave corporate the corporate world, and quite honestly, that that no moved me into entrepreneurship. And look, they they missed out on someone with your and I'm not upset about it. it. it no, it was, it was meant a to blessing. Be, yes. Yeah, I totally get it, yeah. and that does push a lot of women into entrepreneurship. Yes. But my point is, a lot of corporations miss out on a lot of female brain power because they don't get that uh, providing that um, child care would keep really smart talent on their team. And we both know companies that have both men and women at the top right. tend to be more profitable than those that are run Correct. by all men. Correct. And so they're missing out. I agree. And, and, I, and I also think it isn't just a woman's issue. I think it's a parent issue. I think there's a lot of active men that want to be at home. So I think companies in the corporate world need to think a little bit more about the whole person and not just, you're my worker bee, because how I think there's a big issue with retention and family life and how do we keep the the American family structure intact with kids getting the attention they need at home from their parents because it's going to impact the future of our children and how do we also keep the shareholders happy um, with productivity at the workplace so I think there needs to be a rehaul quite honestly especially with this COVID and people working from home in this hybrid situation I think I personally think the government needs to step in to figure out how are we going to keep the economy flourishing and people happy at work 
um, as well as supporting their family. And you know what else I think would make a difference? If you look at the top 500 fortune companies, such a small percentage of the CEOs are women. It's really sad. And having more female CEOs that are sensitive to that issue yes. is what would change the corporate workplace for the yes. better. And this is a li- yeah. reason why I'm funding female founders, and I, we can get into it. But I do believe I believe men and men and women lead differently. I I do believe women lead with empathy. And they leave holistically. And they, they take into consider all aspects of their employee, not just mm-hmm. one element. And when you come at it from that, you're going to have more loyalty and more long-term. People are going to stay longer. Absolutely. Like they used to. Yes, like right. they used to. Yeah. And so, and I love that, that you invest in uh, female-founded funds and also in um, women founders. And I guess that is what... Um, have helped you to have the idea of starting this Blazing Babes community, which I know is all female founders that you started like a decade ago. Yes. And I want to talk about sure, that. Sure. But before we do, yes. how did you make that leap yeah. into venture? Like, did someone say, hey, we want you to invest no. in this? Like, No. My yeah, story. I'd love to know. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So it started with the, the Blazing Babes community in 2000. I actually read this book. I'm sure if you read it by Pamela Rickman, it's called The Stiletto Network. It's about oh, yes. women yeah. helping women mm-hmm. in cocktail parties across the U.S., forming informal groups and formal groups. And it was really using the premise of networking yes. and, and coming together and how can I help you yeah. uh, make introductions. So that was nine years ago. And I think uh, the term stiletto is kind of old school, so I love your blazing babes. <laughs> yeah, like, the logo. Let, come on, let's step it up, yes, ladies. Yes, let's know. be a little edgy yeah, yes, yeah. and less conservative and a little bit more yeah. Uh, fun. Yeah. Um, but it was really getting together over cocktails after you put the kids to sleep or after your day ends and talking to other like-minded women that are doing it, do, you know, managing the, the home life as well as the work life. A lot of the women, we, let's call it an MVP, like a test of the past nine years, we found that 80% of our women are women leaving corporate and wanting to launch their own companies. This is over years. So we pivoted our programming and, and workshops and events and speaker series to focus on how do we get these women launching their ideas, getting their ideas with tr- some traction. So mm-hmm. the experience that we've had over the past nine years is literally helping these women through our programming, through events, through speak- speaker series, workshops, in scaling from the beginning, just from the idea. I love that because building a new business and scaling it is no easy thing. It takes a village. So the Blazing Babes community is a great concept. Great. Is it located in Chicago. Well, we started in Chicago. Yeah. Let's call it like a test case. And now we're launching nationally. So we're, oh, re- we're, we're redoing our website. We're going to have a membership portal. And we're going, we're traveling from city to city, all starting this fall through next year. And we're going to do some private events to talk about what women need, what female founders need, and the support they need. Not just I need to learn how to do a pitch deck or I, I need to learn how to, what's my fundraising strategy or you know, do you have access to some lawyers, affordable lawyers or great accountants? But how do we deal with mansplaining? How do we deal with pitching? What do we deal when we ask, a, we're the founder and we have a male analyst and all the VCs are asking questions to the male analyst. How do we handle that yeah. a, in appropriately? Um, uh, a, a, what is the strategy? And a lot of women don't know how to do that. So they absolutely don't. And would you believe that's what our film is about? Oh, OK. <laughs> Show her the money yes. is Introducing women to venture capital, because most of them don't know about it, and showing women founders how do you access it and encouraging more females, more women yes. to invest yes. in angel groups and yes. in startups and in female founded venture capital funds, because we need more women sitting at that decision making right. table so that women are not just pitching yes. men. Yes. They are pitching women right. who get their concept, get their idea, yes. and are funding them. Yes. Women like you. Yes. So th- so yeah. I want to answer your question in a roundabout way. Yeah. So what happened was, as I was revenue positive, building and scaling the Chicago location, making money, and not even, I actually didn't even invest any money in this community. All the revenue I poured back in the business and scaled it. 
I was pitching to all male venture capitalists to mm-hmm. invest in Blazing Babes, this tech yeah. base community. And I was getting a lot of no's. In addition, the women. No surprise. <laughs> in addition, no surprise. The, women, the, the female founders in our community were also doing the same thing, getting a lot of no's, yes. pitching. So you asked how, how and why did you get into venture capital? Now, as this was going on, and I can publicly say this, I was also going through a divorce. And so I was not making money. Mm-hmm. I did not have any power. Money is power. And I think yeah. I've heard this statement before with, from you. Yes. And um, so not only did I experience that from a business standpoint, as well as my community of female founders, but personally. So I went into Renata Marino stealth mode and I said, I am going to break into this industry if it's the last thing I do. I love it. And the way I did it was very scrappy. And I always say this, and you can quote me on this. My first angel check, I I, I left my marriage with no money. I literally had to start from the bottom. And after networking, and I'm an expert networker. I mean, this is why I did Launch Blazing Babes nine years ago, is networking is the key. Not only... And I I would even use the word connecting. It is. Yeah, networking is an overused word, but it's connecting, but it's authentic connections. Yes. A lot of people go into this as a tit for tat. And it is not a it tip for not, tat. No. And when you go into it that way, you are going to be burned. Right. So you go into I'm it. I'm so with, glad you're saying this. Yeah. It's such an important thing it, for people to take away from today. Yes. It's not tit for tat. It's how can I help you? Who could I, in my circle, could I yep. connect you to to help you move forward? Expecting nothing in return. Nothing. Because I believe in karma. That is the gift. Uh, it, you will. The gift that is will connecting come back. them to someone that helps them. And then you'll have this reputation of like, she always connects or he always always connects and a, a good person to know you should know that person they're really helpful they they made me they were pivotal in my career yes i mean that's and, how and it isn't works. that the reward it the is. reward is not what no. did you do for no. me the reward is did i connect you to someone that helped better your community your business your life and that is the greatest gift of all. And that's, I believe that's how women are. And I think that yeah. um, Blazing Babes wants to handpick all those women. Who are the women that help other women? And how can we come together as a unit yes. to be able to, to be a force? Because change does not happen unless we come together. I love that. Yeah. You know, there's very few communities that I think have that mentality. Yes. And uh, another one is my friend Carrie Murray, the Bra Network. Um, and, and those networks are about finding your people. Yes. And, and and being with people who, like you said, are givers, yes. connectors, yes. Uh, want to help each other. Right. They're not in it just to help themselves. And that's a that's a huge mentality shift that we have to have in our female communities. Right. Um, that, and, yeah. And one of the things I learned and as a founder, as a former founder and many founders out there probably would agree is when you start from the beginning, you learn what what not what to do and what not to do Mm -hmm. so i'm a big believer in not alienating women or any people i like to have open door policy of like whoever's whoever wants to join blazing babes can join blazing babes but what i learned was not everyone has that same let me help you they're they're more of what can i get out of this and i'm not saying that our programming shouldn't help you but the mentality that we want for our community is this pay it forward helpful so absolutely our relaunch will be application yeah and you'll have to go through an interview and we have a different strategy of how we're going to go national it's going to be i love that yeah and you know uh we have such a uh synergy here because we're taking our uh film show her the money on a national tour i mean um great and and i think you know all these things that we're all doing are going to start moving that needle yes more women need to invest in venture capital. Yes. How has that worked out for you so far? Yes. Like, yeah. Right. So sure. uh, this is a strategy for women maybe that don't have the funds or want to break in. And there's different paths. So what yes. I what I one of the things and I'm going to be honest, um, I became a, a let's call it an adult intern. So I started working for free five years ago for other VC funds. God, that was so smart. Yes, yeah, so I learn it. Yes, I Love needed. To, I lear, I I had no problem starting from the bottom again. Um, I think a lot of us have who are older and are reinventing ourselves. If we're switching careers, feel embarrassed. 
about starting again, like I an intern. I think women feel embarrassed, period, period. about venture capital because yes. they don't know what it is. Yes. They don't know why they should be a part of yes. it. They don't know how to be a part of yes. it. Yes. What they don't know, and that we're both trying to, you know, through this program and others, yes. trying to explain to them is this is the most exciting thing they could be involved oh, in. It's incredible. This and it's incredible it's women with incredible innovations, incredible opportunities to invest in things before they ever hit the stock market. Oh. Everybody should have a part of their portfolio in something that's venture capital, either fund or in a direct company. Uh, yes. You know, and I know women are super risk adverse, but. You know, the stock market is risky. The right. real estate is risky. Everything's risky. Right. Why not have a part of your portfolio in this arena? And it's so exciting. You meet the most incredible women, right? Right. right. The founders, the innovators. It's fun. Um, I think the best part is is being part of it, helping and learning. And I think it really keeps you on your toes. So one of the things I always have women do is you can actually become an advisor and get advisor share. So if you don't have money, so that's kind of what my strategy was. I One, one, one thing that the male VCs were telling me is, well, you have an incredible background. You're Ivy League educated. You have an MBA. For, you're a merit scholar from Booth. You've been in. You check all the boxes except you've never written a check for for a startup. So you're not. You can never be a venture capitalist. That's that, what. That's I was, what a guy would say. Oh, that, yeah. they all said that. Yeah. They're like, you're not legit. Yeah. So what I did, I'm like, no one tells me no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one I, tells me I no. I can tell that, especially if it's a man. <laughs> no one tells me no. So I actually went through my budget. I, I, I said, okay, well, I don't need this. I don't need Starbucks every day. I'm just going to make Kerrig coffee. I literally cut everywhere. I also became, and while I was doing that and saving money, I also became an advisor and had advisor shares on startups. So I mm-hmm. actually spent one hour a week on several, multiple startups helping them with their pitch deck since I have the innovation experience. Right. I have the financial background. I have an incredible network of Ivy League people who are in specific sectors across the U.S. who can actually, I introduce them to these founders. The founders start saying like, Renata, wow, she's got great intellect, great experience, and a great network. So my re- reputation on the founder side was stellar. Right. They would introduce me to, to some of their LPs and VCs and say, you need to talk to Renata. So then I started bringing deals to some of these VCs. I became a scout, an adult intern scout. Right. And so... I, not only did I get share equity in um, the startups, but I also developed really good rep, um, relationships with pretty big VCs. And so my first check, I gave up Starbucks for a year. And quite honestly, I mean, I couldn't believe how much money I was spending on Starbucks, but right. $5,000, I wrote my first check in 2019. Bravo. And so that's how I started. And that's how people can start yes. on that scale. You can. And I'm glad we're talking about this today because, you know, I think sometimes people think, oh, venture capital, you have to have $250,000 No. To, you know, get in on it. No. And, you know, the cool thing is you can actually get in on deals that other people would have to put 250 in. Yes. And you go to a syndicate yes. and for five thousand, you're yes. in on the same deal. Yes. Prior to it going on the stock market, it's fascinating, isn't yeah. it? Right. And yeah. so the yeah, so I learned, you know, there's there's Republic, there's the silica, there's special perfect vehicles, there's angel groups. I know you you t- yeah. you have that. And so I was, you know, I investig- investigated and networked with various angel groups, very acceler various accelerators that have specific special perfect vehicles. I took a lot of classes that have training on how to be a scout for mm-hmm. VC, how to break into VC. I'm going to name some names because I believe that they deserve credibility. Great, I go- want you to. Going VC, John Gannon has launched an incredible... Going VC. It's called Going VC. It's based out of San Francisco, but they're everywhere. I think New York, San Francisco, but um, an online class where you learn how to be how to break into venture capital. A lot of them are the younger, you know, younger 20, 30-somethings. But I was probably, I think in my cohort in 2020, I was the oldest. <laughs> but again, I didn't care. I, I learned yeah. so much. And you know what? It's not an ageism thing. I, I learned so much from the younger tech people who worked at startups before, which I didn't, you know, I didn't work at Google, but I learned so much. Well, um, the young women coming up have an advantage on us, right? Right, right. Um, as we're older, sorry to put you in my no. category, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're not millennials. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, 
it's really the successful women of my generation and your generation that need to learn about venture capital because they're probably the most poised to invest in it. We have um, the money and we have the the we also have the, the, the life experience. experience. Yeah. And then the younger women, they're so lucky that people are talking about venture capital and they're becoming aware of it at such a young age. Yes, so it's you great. Know, things are changing. We're still at only getting two percent of venture capital yes. women, which means men get ninety eight percent. Yes. It's still uh, very harsh. But it's us having conversations like this, encouraging more women to jump in that will move that needle. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the things it'll benefit them. Exactly. I, I will say this that is important to me that I've learned over the past five years just breaking in, apart from writing the check and networking um, and scouting, is we need to align with the right men who support us. Yes, and they are out there. I have found gems, and I actually wrote an article in LinkedIn a couple months ago on who are the top five men that have helped me through my path. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm have i more than happy and can't wait to shout it from the roof rooftops to highlight these men. Right. Um, I know I became an LP in Alexis Ohanian's fund, uh, who's married to Serena Williams. He's a co-founder of Reddit. And he is a firm believer in supporting women. I know he wanted to get more women and diversity LPs in his fund. Right. Um, so that, I think I, I became a small LP um, in 2020 or 21, and that was through networking. And so he's mm -hmm. a big, he, he part of his um, mission is to support diversity and venture capital. And I he's a pioneer that. in that. As well. I love that. I love to hear that. And I had John Majeski on not too long ago okay. of Portola Valley Partners. Oh, great. Also, they are big advocates of investing in women. So we absolutely have our male advocates, but that is not going to solve the problem. That's going to help. Help. But we need more women in venture yes. capital. That's what's going to solve the problem because when women go to pitch, they need to see more women at that table. Oh, don't get Bottom me wrong. Bottom line, I agree. And yeah. one of the things, the numbers, and you've, I think you've touted the numbers before, but the numbers speak for themselves. I call it that the venture capital industry is leaving money on the table Absolutely. because for every dollar invested in a female founder, the return is two, twofold. Yeah. And female founder companies, and this was a report done by Mass Challenge and BCG several years ago, uh, women founded startups exit faster and at higher valuations than yeah. their male counterparts. And that's so true. And they're starting to realize that and the smart men are coming on board. But one thing never changes and that's this. And I said this in a TED talk I did called oh, Fun Women I Save the World. People tend to invest in people they like, identify with. Like invest in life. And it, it, that is never going to change. Even the most well-intentioned man will sit at that table and say, uh, I don't yeah. understand yes. that new breast pump. Exactly. I don't understand that exactly. bra. You know, and it's hard to invest in something if you don't get it or right. believe in it, understand it, or identify right. with it. I'm not saying they won't. No. I'm just saying it's more likely right. that a smart accomplished businesswoman yes. is more likely to yes. say, oh my God, right. that is a problem you're solving that I know needs to be solved, right? Well, right, so what yeah. happens, and this is this happens in venture, this happens in corporate, is a lot of men, and not all men, are caught up in their ego. So when they, they're a GP in a fund, GPs have check writing authority. So one thing that really has perturbed me over the years, having been in the industry for five years, is when funds say, oh, well, we're divert, we have, we have women on our team. Your women are junior women. They're considered investors, but they do not have check writing authority, meaning they are not the final decision makers. They may, they call themselves an investor. They bring a deal to the GPs. It's the GP that d decides to write the check. Yes. So when the GP, if there's a male GP who wants to bring on another GP with the same check writing authority, same equality of the vote. Yes. It is the smart men who have humility and they lose the ego and they think about the money of the fund. The goal is to return the fund. So how can I, who am I going to bring on in the health, let's call it health and wellness space, that's going to access a wider network, a cast a wider net, net and bring in other entrepreneurs that most likely don't relate to me Yes. Let me bring on a female who's very smart. 
right. who has track record, right. who a female founder in femtech can pitch and the woman, the f- female GP can say, yeah, I went through fertility issues. I get this. This is a big problem. Right. Totally. And what I love, too, is that I see you're investing in a lot of female founded yes. funds. Yes, yes. And I am excited about the acceleration of female founded funds. It's one of the things we touch on in the movie, Show Her the Money, is that for the first time in history, there is an acceleration of female founded funds. Now, these take years to build up, but we need more women investing in those funds. So we have to get women to understand what is venture capital and why do I want to invest in a female founded fund of super smart women who are picking real winners like uh, one of them in the film that we talked to is uh, Pocket Sun of So Gal Love her. And I'm an angel in that group. Yes. I know you are. So, you know, perfect example. She's been picking the winners. She's Um, great. Anybody in those funds is doing really well and um, she knows how to pick those unicorns. So, you know, um, it's not all men that are successful at this. It's a lot of women that are successful and women need to jump on board. I'm glad you're inspiring women to do that. And I also love that you're taking all your talent and expertise to help women founders have successful startups with your Blazing Babes community. And I hope people will check that out. Um, let's spell Blazing Babes and tell them how to find your community. Sure. So you can use, go to my website. It's renatamarino.com. Let's spell it because some people oh, are just listening. Yes, it's R E N. A-T-A, and then M is in Mary, E-R-I-N-O dot com. And on my investing site at the bottom, you can email me. And if you're a female founder, please email me. I will look at your deck and uh, we can take it from there. And I take it you're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn and um, I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter. You can follow me. If you go to Sociatap, you can find me. It's like a link tree and it has all my... Uh, contact information there. Beautiful. Okay, we know where to find her. What an incredible guest today, right? Uh, Thank you all so much for tuning in. Of course, you can visit us at sheangelinvestors.com and find us on social media. Of course, I'm on LinkedIn. I'll see you there. And you can also follow Invest in Her. It's uh, Instagram, Catherine Gray, Invest in Her. So uh, remember to check out Venture Capital as a way to diversify your portfolio, look for those female founded funds, and also obviously check out Blazing Babes community. If you're a startup or wanting to start a company, immerse yourself in an amazing community like that one because it does take a village. You don't want to do it on your own. And uh, that will be a way to pretty much ensure your success. So check it out. Thanks for being a guest, Renata. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Make it a great week.